When it comes to children, meaning each and every one, we are one team with one goal to achieve, with a dream of hope, a promise to their future at the heart of all that we believe. More hands. My name is Melinda Ingram, and I'm the director and forensic interviewer at the Lakes Area Child Advocacy Center. The services that we offer here at the Advocacy Center are very unique, and the clients that we work with are very unique as well. We work with children ages 0 to 18 who are victims of some type of abuse, primarily sexual abuse, physical abuse, uh, witness to domestic violence, and severe neglect. And my goal as a forensic interviewer is to not only gather information from the child, but to make the child feel respected and comfortable while they tell about a very difficult experience and very painful experience. When the children first arrive at the center, we uh, greet them. I go out and introduce myself and offer them a juice or a snack and show them the toys and make them feel as comfortable as possible. And the child comes back with me to the interview room. The interview protocol that we use consists of several elements. The first being rapport building. I usually, depending on the child's age, I usually draw a picture of their face or their favorite animal. Or we talk about things that are important to them. And then I am trained to take the information that the child gives me to gather information about the incident, the abuse scenario is what we call it. Uh, the team members are observing the interview through a one-way glass. They can hear the interview as, and see it, and they can also communicate with me through an earpiece that I wear. That way, if, for instance, law enforcement has a question about jurisdiction or what happened to the clothing, I can ask that question and make sure it's included in my interview and my information gathering and not interrupt my interaction with the child. We uh, try to make the interviews as thorough and child-friendly and neutral as possible. Um, the interviews usually last between 30 and 40 minutes depending on the child's age and um, at the close of the interview I thank the child for visiting with me and most of the time the children who come to the center do need a physical exam. They accompany me to the exam room where our nurse examiner does a head-to-toe physical exam, which um, is unique also because our nurse examiner is trained to recognize signs of possible sexual abuse or physical abuse. Part of the physical exam, the very first thing is making the child feel that they are in control and have power. By doing this, we ask the child to select a gown that we would like to use to have them undress in private, but this starts in, they are empowered to which gown they choose. From here, we step out of the room, allow them to undress, we knock, ask permission to come in, and in doing this simple physical exam of first, perhaps, using an animal or a dog to explain what we're doing and have the child participate in holding the instruments and helping us do the uh, exam on the dog and then they're very cooperative in letting me do the exam on them. It's important to realize that power comes in small ways. Asking a child which ear they want me to look at first is very important. They get to choose. I can look at your nose or look at your mouth. Which one would you choose? And by doing so, it makes an instant rapport. There is a respect for children that unfortunately they do not get in a lot of situations. Most offices, police stations are not built and have children in mind. We try to keep this area very friendly. We're very upfront with the child. If they say no, we honor that no. We may have to come back and do a different part of the exam at a different time, and that's okay. We try to let the child know that they, we are here because we want to see how healthy they are, not because we want to see how injured they are. And it's important that you reassure the child that their body is growing well, and we try to put an emphasis on wellness and taking care of their body. 
I think as far as the multidiscipline team working without a group, we couldn't do this. It takes everyone's help and every small thing makes something great. Hi, my name is TJ Chapman and I'm the Advocate Associate for the Advocacy Center. And uh, I'm real fortunate in what I get to do because I get the fun stuff. I'm on the fun side of the kids. Uh, when they first come in, um, I get a chance to get to know them. And like I said, I'm fortunate because I don't have to talk to them about why they're here. Uh, I get to talk to them about what they like. And that's, that's really good to know because a lot of times the children haven't had a chance to tell what they like and what is important to them. And so I get to know that. And by doing that, then they get a gift. Every child that comes in here gets a gift bag. It's one of these and it says, I'm awesome. And right here I put their name and kind of draw some little pictures. But uh, in that bag, they will get things that are particular to them. You know, if they like, uh, say, like a little lion, they'll get a lion. I uh, have some dogs and cats. Whatever animal they like, they're going to get that kind of stuffed animal. And also the kids all get one of these pillows. And these are made by a very special lady named Lorraine. And she donates these to us. And every child gets one that gets a bag. And if it's in the winter time, kind of cold, we got blankets. We'll give them a blanket, and those are all uh, different sizes and special too. Um, I'm real big into arts, and I think every child should be in art. So they get coloring books, uh, crayons. The older ones, I'll give them colored pencils. Uh, a lot of the older kids, I like to give them notebooks. Teenage girls will get a journal because I think it's real important for them to have somewhere to go to write down what they think. And uh, sometimes it's easier to write it than it is to say it. Uh, teenage girls are kind of hard to buy for, so we have some little bracelets and necklaces that we have here for them, and they can choose what they want. But each child gets an individualized bag. I also will give them uh, health care needs, uh, toothbrushes, toothpaste. I tell them how to brush their teeth. Uh, sometimes the need's a little deeper than that. We'll give them grooming accessories. Um, I have some other school supplies too if they're in need of pencils and paper and pens and things like that. But I can't say enough how much I want each child to feel validated and feel very, very special. And we want them to know that they are awesome children. So that's why these bags are created one of a kind for each child that comes here so that when they leave, they know they're one of a kind and very special. More hands, we can use more hands. So many needs to embrace. With open arms, open hearts, open minds, open doors. And if we open up ourselves,